Coming up, you're gonna discover how we approach our ASO strategies for smaller apps versus larger ones. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.co, the place you go when you want action-packed content in the app business. And today, I wanna to talk about a question that I got asked about the different ASO strategies that we deploy based on the app. So if it's a smaller app and an indie developer versus some of the bigger clients that we work with, I thought it was a great question, so I'm gonna walk you through our exact strategy. All right, so before we start, let's differentiate what makes a small app versus a large app. So the smaller apps, they tend to have not so much of a marketing budget, right? They're really relying on ASO for growth. So they have anywhere from zero to about, I would say probably less than 5,000, but definitely less than 5,000 spending on app marketing, right? So they're not doing too much. They're very much reliant on ASO. And lastly, they don't have too much of a brand recognition. Right? You're not gonna be able to Google their app name and find their company name like, oh yeah, I know that brand, right? Like Microsoft, Apple, Red Bull. And so they're very much reliant on ASO, right? Then they might be doing a little bit on search ads, but really not that much. So let's just say smaller apps tend to be more reliant on ASO anywhere from, I would say 70 to 100% of their growth, their downloads are coming from ASO. Now the larger apps, are gonna be some of our bigger clients, they tend to have a pretty decent market size marketing budget, right? And then also they're using search ads, they're using Facebook ads, they're using chart boost, they're using all the different channels out there for growth. So ASO is a part of their strategy, but they're not completely relying on it. If the apps are completely shut down and there's no search and you couldn't search for any apps, they still have a way to download their, your, their apps, right? And then last thing I would say the mix from an ASO perspective, they might be anywhere from I would say 40 to 60% of their downloads are coming from organic. Or maybe I've worked with some that are like, you know, 20 and 10% of the downloads are coming from organic. And that's why they need help, right? They're like, hey, we're completely reliant on these acquisition channels in our brand because we're not ranking for anything. And that's what gets me really excited when I see a bigger company come to me and say, look, we're not getting anything from organic, but we have a ton of downloads, a ton of great reviews and good downloads every single day, then I get really excited because I can go after high traffic, high competitive keywords. And lastly, obviously, there's a little bit of brand recognition. So you can search for their brand and they're gonna rank well for it, right? So they do commercials or something else. They've got a brand already built up for the, the app as well. All right, now, before I talk about the specific strategies for smaller apps versus larger apps, let me talk to you, let me share this little spreadsheet with you. It's not little, it's actually a humongous spreadsheet that we create every time we do ASO. So if you watch some of my content, I do always recommend that you use two different ASO tools. And as of this recording, my two favorite that are the most accurate, when I say favorite, are gonna be Sensor Tower and Mobile Action, okay? And here's what we do. We pull the traffic and the difficulty, the search score and the chance. They pretty much all mean the same thing with slight variations. So the scores are gonna be a little different. Mobile action has it from five to 100. And then traffic wise, Sensor Tower has it from 0 0.5 to 10. Now they're pretty much the same thing. As you can see, the first few rows, 5.7 and 57. So search traffic, same thing. Now Apple actually has it the way that mobile action has it. So it's usually in the, the tens, you know, 57, 67, whatever it is. Now the difficulty and some of the things that you see that are highlighted green is what I've automatically through this spreadsheet have deemed to be low competition, right? So difficulty, the lower the better. It goes all the way up to like nine, I think. But anyways, anything under a three is what I've termed to be low difficulty on Sensor Tower. And anything above a 70 is what I've deemed to be low competition on mobile action because mobile action has a chance score, which means that it's just low there's a high probability that you're gonna rank well for it, okay? Rather than show your difficulty score, they have a chance score, which is actually a nice thing. So the higher the chance, the better, the lower the difficulty, the better. From now on, I'm gonna use the mobile action scores because I found them to be a little bit more accurate, especially on iOS, on Sensor Tower. The traffic score is a little bit more accurate on, I'm sorry, Google Play. On Google Play, Sensor Tower tends to be a little bit more accurate, but mobile action tends to be a little bit more accurate when it comes to the chance stuff. Okay, but try to use two tools if you can. I would probably use mobile action if I had to just pick one. All right, so let's get into how I actually do the optimization 
for the smaller apps. Okay, so for the smaller apps, again, we're gonna be reliant on ASO for growth. So anywhere from 70 to 100% of their downloads are gonna come straight from ASO, okay? That's where most of my apps are coming from. Now, when I'm doing optimization for these type of apps, I look at traffic scores anywhere from 10 to 50, okay? Because anything above 50 tends to be a little bit more competitive. So that's just what I found to be a really nice blend. Now, the higher of the traffic, obviously the better. So you wanna try to find fours, any, if there's some that you see that's above 50, great. But those, what, those are, what I wanna say is it's the least 10, because if you try to go anything less than 10 or even around 10, you're not gonna get that big of a growth, okay? But you wanna get it probably around 20 if you can, but a minimum, bare minimum 10, okay? And you wanna find these keywords. If I can go back to my spreadsheet, look at this keyword that I found, 4.1, Traffic score, 0 0.5 difficulty, 41. Search score, 92%. So I know I'm probably gonna rank in the top five for that particular keyword because both tools are telling me it's low competition. That means I'm definitely gonna rank well for it. If one of the tools is telling me low competition, it's hit or miss. Mobile action tends to be a little bit more accurate, but it's hit or miss. So I like having both tools and analyzing the data that way, okay? So again, let's just to recap, you want, the main thing is you want at least a decent traffic. There's no point in trying to rank for keywords that have a, a five traffic score on mobile action, 100% chance you're gonna rank well. You're just not gonna get the downloads that you want, right? So chance is very, very important. Difficulty or chance is very, very important. At least a 70, but if you can, try to find some that are 80, like I found as well, 80 and plus. Those become keywords that you rank for, okay? Now for large halves, bring it on. I love The Rock, right? He's one of my favorite wrestlers back in the day and he's killing it on Instagram. But when it comes to larger apps, we look at traffic scores. We want at least 30. Now again, the higher the better, but we want at least 30 because I know you're driving traffic through other means. And if you think about how ASO and keyword rankings are kind of done is Apple's gonna look at obviously your keywords and how well they're optimized for it. So that's that would be the most heavyweight. The second would be how many downloads are you getting on average? So it would be a seven day average. I don't know the exact average. Anybody that says it, they, they're either working for Apple or they're just making stuff up in my opinion, but the download average. So I would probably say seven day or just how many you're getting on a daily basis. And then lastly, reviews. So those are all important. And then retention is gonna be important as well, especially on Google Play. But all those are factors, but I would say keywords are probably the number one factor and everything else subsequently in that order. It would be keywords, it would be downloads, it would be retention on Google Play, and then it would be reviews. So all that is taking into place. Now for larger apps, their downloads are a big piece, right? They're obviously driving more downloads. Now I can go after really competitive keywords. So it doesn't really matter. And I put it here, chance or difficulty, it doesn't really matter as long as it's relevant and as long as there's real good traffic for it. So if I'm working with these bigger clients, I look at really high traffic keywords. I'm like, okay, this is definitely relevant to us. And I'm, af I'm able to go after, like if I was working for meditation, I think this is a great case study because I've have a couple of different meditation apps that we're working with from client perspective. But let's say I was working with Calm. I'm not working with Calm, but if I was, I'm definitely gonna have meditation in our app name because it's the app of the year in 2017 and there's a real big brand name. They got tons of downloads. So I'm gonna have that because I wanna rank well for that, okay? Or mindfulness, all these very generic terms I'm gonna have in my app name. But if I'm working for smaller apps and we've gotten a few apps featured, MindBliss was the other one, I might focus on long tail keywords around meditation. So what else can I think about? right? Zen meditation. Is it that? Is it some breathing exercise that I can figure out? So I'm going to focus more on the long tail keywords and optimize the app name for that rather than wasting it on meditation because I'm never going to see the light of day. So why waste all those characters on a term like meditation if I'm never going to see the light of day? Now, I know what you're thinking. If I'm targeting the phrases, I'm generally probably going to have meditation in there anyways, right? But I'm targeting the long tail of meditation, not necessarily meditation. So for, for these larger apps, I'm going to go competitive and I want high traffic keywords because that's gonna drive growth. I'm gonna rank for these high traffic keywords because of my other channels, acquisition channels, and because I probably have good downloads and probably good reviews as well. All right, guys, hope that was helpful. I'm gonna kill you, <laughs> Rock. All right, let me kill this real quick. All right, guys, I'm back. Hope that was helpful. If you got any other questions, we just started doing this 
but it's a free coaching call with me, free 20 minute call. Essentially, I look at your app, I tell you my feedback for it, what I would do if I were you to drive growth or retention or monetization for the app. So I wanna talk a little bit more about the other aspects of the app business, mainly monetization and retention. So I talk a lot about growth as well. So if you want access to that, go check out our website. It is at masters.co. Find the coaching, free coaching call. Let's just make it at masters.co slash coaching slash coaching. And you'll be able to get on a free call with me. The only thing I ask is that you let me record it so that I can publish it on YouTube and the podcast as well. And lastly, if you want to see our entire playbook, go check out at Masters Academy for one low monthly price. You're going to see our ASO strategies for iOS 11, how we do these different keyword boosts, just the different black hat strategies that we're able to utilize and help our clients with for growth. So it is at mastersacademy.com. All right, guys, and I'll see you on the next video.